Hey everybody, what's up? This video is brought to you by Linode Cloud Computing. If you're looking for web hosting for your next project, I recommend you check them out. I've been using them personally for over 10 years now. It's what I use for my website, CodeHawk, and it saves me a ton of money over Azure AWS. So whether you're dealing with big data, mobile apps, websites, uh, even building video games and you need a gaming server or something like that, Linode has solutions for pretty much everything that you're looking to build. Hey everybody, what's up? All right, so in this video, what we're gonna be talking about is the top 10 new web frameworks to learn or to maybe investigate in 2021. And this list is all about projects that have been created over like the last rolling 12 months. So everything has to be new because we're all familiar with like Django, ASP.NET, Ruby on Rails and all that. This is gonna focus on actual new frameworks so that have been created recently. All right, so jumping in, um, this is gonna go from least popular to most popular. So at number 10, where it's gonna go to a new framework built for the Rust language and that is called Valerie. It's still in its really early phase, um, and it doesn't have a whole lot of features at the moment, but uh, one of the highlights is that it has no virtual DOM, and it's all about MVVM uh, architecture rather than MVC. All right, so number nine is going to go to Faro, and Faro is a progressive, incrementally adoptable TypeScript framework for full stack development. So whatever the heck that means, basically though, it's um, aiming to be a better TypeScript, no JS type framework. All right, so number eight is going to go to Alisar, which is from the new Deno language. Uh, that is from the creator or one of the main creators of Node.js has created the Deno runtime. And uh, this aims to actually be a very large full stack web framework, similar to something like Django or ASP.NET. All right, so number seven is going to go to Elder.js, and this is called an opinionated static site generator uh, and web framework with SEO in mind. So uh, basically, it's all about static site generation, and um, when you're building static sites, it's basically about blogging content type sites that you're looking to get search engine traffic on. So its biggest highlight is like, hey, we do that well, and we focus on SEO. The logo is probably the craziest one in all of this stuff, but it looks like the it's such a new project. They just threw whatever in there. All right, so number six is going to go to Tiny HTTP, a modern Express-like web framework. And this is written in TypeScript, so Express is, is normally JS, right? Um, and then it also says that this is all about doing away with so much of the bloat that we see in modern node modules. Uh, Node.js type uh, applications. You know, we see so much bloat. This aims to just simply remove as much bloat as possible to avoid any sort of legacy uh, hell down the road. So some of the highlights is that it is uh, actually considered, it's two times faster than Express according to its benchmarks. So that's like the main highlight. All right, so number five is going to go to Sauron or Sauron. I don't even know how you say that. It actually is a Lord of the Rings reference. Um, some of these nerds, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, no, it's, it's a Lord of the Rings thing. I don't know how you pronounce that. I think it's like Sauron or something like that. But anyway, uh, this is a new framework also written in Rust. And it's uh, heavily inspired by Elm. So Elm is something we used to hear about a ton. It seems like we don't really hear about it anymore. And uh, bottom line on that, it was it was like... Uh, language that included HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all in one for web development, written by a guy that was working on his PhD at like Harvard or something like that. But the bottom line is it just never really took off. So in my opinion, um, this one being as popular as it is at number five, it's just, um, you know, I'll, I'll wait and see whether or not this takes off, but I would probably guess it won't. Um, anyway, so number four is going to go to Kotlis, and this is from the people over that created Kotlin which is an alternative way to write uh, and uh, write. It's a language that runs on the JVM, right? Java Virtual Machine. And you can use that to build Android development uh, or Android apps. And Kotlis, though, this is actually focusing on a serverless framework. So we saw that before, like static site generators. The main thing about this is it's like one click. You can deploy your serverless application right to AWS. All right, moving on to number three is going to be a new framework from the Microsoft people. Uh, when I say Microsoft, it's, it's a Microsoft project, but it's called the Fluid Framework. 
and it's also uh, it's really it's written in TypeScript, and it's about building uh, distributed real-time collaborative web applications. So it's using things like um, Signal R and a lot of other technologies in order to like WebRTC type stuff in order to have this real-time communication for like chat apps, things like that. Its biggest highlight is that it has very low latency. All right, so number two is also a Microsoft project, and this is going to go to Feather HTTP. And this is really just a lightweight uh, C Sharp .NET Core framework for building APIs. And when I say APIs, it's for lightweight APIs. So that is uh, also from the Microsoft people. All right, and then finally, number one is going to go to Go Fiber. I actually have a dedicated video on this framework because it seems like Go has really taken off, not just in the United States, but all over the place. It seems like I think Go has kind of emerged as like the next big language that we're just going to see a ton of Go over the next decade, probably. But this framework is lightning fast. It's Express like, and it's probably like 20 times faster than Express. And if you're interested in actually getting started on that, my video actually shows how to just simply get that up and running. I think I do some basic Git requests, routing, and then show how to um, render templates and all that stuff. All right, so that's my list. If you know of any other new frameworks that have been created recently, let me know. Uh, please leave a comment. That helps me out. And then also, uh, if you would like and subscribe, that also helps out. If you're learning how to code, check out my website, codehawk.com. These are all tutorials directly from me, all created recently. And uh, say you wanted to get into Go or whatever, C Sharp, Django, Python, more React, Angular stuff. Uh, anyway, it's all there. Codehawk, one price for all the courses.